Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to solve a radical equation. That means we're going to solve an equation that has a radical in it. Okay, here it is. The square root of 1 minus 8x equals 5. This is a very basic radical equation. In order to get the square root radical off, you square both sides. That leaves you with what's underneath the square root radical. So you have 25. Then subtract 1 from both sides. We're just solving a regular equation now. Negative 8x equals 24. Divide both sides by negative 8. And you get x equals negative 3. But the thing is, is that you can never, ever be sure about your answers when you solve a radical equation. You have always got to check your answers. So we're going to substitute negative 3 in for x. And will this work out? I have a feeling it will this time. Because the square root of 25 is indeed 5. So 5 equals 5. And that's true. Ooh, that certainly is overmodulated, isn't it? Now, we're going to solve this radical equation, the square root of x plus 36 plus 6 equals x. So here we go. The square root of x plus 36 plus the number 6 equals x. Remember to always isolate your radical. So I'm subtracting 6 over to the other side of the equation. Okay, now I'm going to square both sides to get the radical off. That means I'm going to square the binomial x minus 6. That means I have to FOIL So I'll have x plus 36 equals x squared minus 12x plus 36. Now the way to solve a quadratic equation most of the time is you have to set it equal to 0, which is what I'm doing here. And you can hear my dogs moving around in the background. We have 0 equals x squared minus 13x. Ah, the 36 is 0 out. Now I'm going to, uh, to solve this by factoring. The easiest kind of factoring. Set each factor equal to 0. And we'll get x equals 0 and x equals 13. But do both of these answers work? Sometimes none of the answers work. Sometimes only one of the answers works. Sometimes both of the answers work. So we're going to have to work them out. We're going to have to do it for both. So here we go. If x equals 0, I substitute 0 for, for x in the original equation. Well, the square root of 0 plus 36 is the square root of 36 
That'll give us 6. 6 plus 6 does not equal 0. Let's try x equals 13. Okay, square root of 13 plus 36 plus 6 equals 13. Is that going to work out? Square root of 49 plus 6 equals 13. Is that true? 7 plus 6, does that equal 13? Yes, it does. 13 equals 13. So now we know that x equals 13 is one of the answers. The solution, in fact, it's the only solution to this radical equation, x equals 13. X equals zero doesn't work. It's, it's what we call an extraneous solution. We're going to solve a real radical equation. The square root of x plus 4 plus the square root of 3x plus 16 equals 2. Okay, step one, I've got to isolate one of these radicals. It doesn't matter which one. So I might as well move this one over to the other side by subtracting it from both sides. So minus 3x plus 16 and minus 3x, uh, 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 the square root of 3x plus 16. There now, these zero out, leaving me with the square root of x plus 4. And over here, I'll have 2 minus the square root of 3x plus 16. Now, I square both sides. So I'll have the square root of x plus 4 squared equals 2 minus the square root of 3x plus 16 squared. All right, on the left side, that's very easy to handle. This will give me x plus 4. But on the right side, be very careful. You have two terms, which means you're going to have to FOIL 2 minus the square root of 3x plus 16 times 2 minus the square root of 3x plus 16. Okay, now I want to keep the equation balanced, so I'm going to continue to write down my left-hand side, even though I'm not doing anything with it. Over here, I'm going to F-O-I-L this. 2 times 2 is 4. Outside is 2 times negative, three, uh, negative the square root of 3 plus 16, so that will be minus 2 times the square root of 3x plus 16. And then inside is also going to be minus 2 times the square root of 3x plus 16. And then last is going to be negative the square root of 3 plus 16 times negative the square root of 3 plus 16. That will be plus the square root of 3 plus 6, uh, 3x plus 16 squared. Now going all the way to the left and starting again, writing x plus 4 equals, I am now going to combine like terms. I'll have 4 minus 4 times the square root of 3x plus 16 plus 3x plus 16. 
because the square root of 3x plus 16 squared is going to give me 3x plus 16 without the radical or outside the radical. Now this is what I have. Going to the next line, notice that 4 and 16 are both constants, so I can add them. I'll have x plus 4 equals 20 plus 3x minus 4 times the square root of 3x plus 16. Whew, that was a lot of work, but there's more work to do. We're going to have to isolate the radical again and then start the whole process over. So I'll subtract 20 from both sides and I'll subtract 3x from both sides. These will zero out, <coughs> leaving me negative 4 times the square root of 3x plus 16. Over here, x minus 3x is negative 2x, and 4 minus 20 is negative 16. Now here's what I've got. Negative 2x minus 16 equals negative 4 times the square root of 3x plus 16. I would say stuff is very negative here. Just to make this visually more attractive and a little bit easier, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1 just to make everything positive. There, I'll multiply both sides of this equation by negative 1. That will give me 2x plus 16 equals 4 times the square root of 3x plus 16. Now, you don't have to do that. I just thought it might make things a little easier. I could have left everything negative. All right. Now, here we are. I am once again, in order to get rid of the radical, going to square both sides. So 2x plus 16 in parentheses squared equals 4 times the square root of 3x plus 16 in parentheses squared. Now notice over here that this is not x plus the square root of 3x plus 16 or x minus the square root of, of 3x plus 16. It's just four times the square root of 3x plus 16. So we don't have to FOIL anything. On the other hand, over here, I do, because there are one, two terms. We have addition going on right here. So I'm going to take 2x plus 16 and multiply it by itself, which is what squaring is. Over here, I'm just going to square the 4 and square the square root of 3x plus 16. That will be 4 squared times the square root of 3x plus 16 squared. Even though you have two terms under the radical, there's only one radical. So right now, all I have to do is square it. Now, over here on the left-hand side, when I say 2x plus 16 times 2x plus 16, this is going to give me 4x squared plus 32x plus 32x plus 16 times 16, which is 6 times 6 is 36, carry the 3. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9. 
and then 1 times 16 is 16, so I'll have a 6, I'll have a 5, I'll have a 2. That's going to be 256. Equals 4 squared, which is 16, times 3x plus 16. Pretty cool. Okay, now, over here on the left-hand side, I'll have 4x squared plus 64x plus 256 equals 48x plus 256. Well, look at this. I have a quadratic equation. Now remember back to beginning algebra. <clears throat> what do you have to do to a quadratic equation in order to solve it? Set it equal to zero. So I am going to have to take this quadratic equation and set it equal to zero. I'll do this by subtracting 48x from both sides of the equation. Oops, it's a weather warning. I'm going to put this on pause. Okay, the weather warning is over. We could have hail, so I better hurry up and get this done. I'm going to subtract 48x from both sides of the equation, and I'm going to subtract 256 from both sides of the equation. That will give me zero on the right. And on the left, ooh, the 256 is zero out. And 64 minus 48, let's see, 14 minus 8 is 6. And now we'll have 5 minus 4, that's 1. So I'll have 16x here, and I'll have 4x squared here. Oops, down here. And that dinging sound is a weather warning coming in by text on my phone. All right, now, well, this is going to be very simple, I think. I can factor 4x squared plus 16x by pulling out a GCF because I have no constant term now. All right. Well, the GCF, the greatest common factor, is going to be 4x because there's 4x in this term and 4x in this term. So I'll pull out a 4x, and that will leave me x plus 4. So I'll have 4x times x plus 4 equals 0. Now do you remember what to do? We set each factor equal to 0. So 4x equals 0, and x plus 4 equals 0. Now, solve each equation. If I come over here to 4x equals 0 and divide both sides by 4, I'll get x equals 0, which is a perfectly good answer. To the right, I'll have x plus 4 equals 0, so to solve this, I'll subtract 4 from both sides, and that will give me x equals negative 4. I now have two answers. Now, both of them might be correct. Both of them might be extraneous, that is false, or one of them might be correct. You don't know. And so we're going to have to go back to the very first line of the equation and try each of our answers. Okay, here we go. I'm going to check x equals 0 first. I'll have the square root, let me put a colon, the square root of 0 plus 4 plus the square root of 3 times 0 plus 16 equals 2. That will be the square root of 4 plus the square root 
of 16 equals 2. You can already see this is not going to work out. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 16 is 4. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 equals 2. Excuse me. No, they don't. This is false. So I'll come back up to my answers and put a big X through X equals 0. Now, let's try X equals negative 4. That will give me the square root of negative 4 plus 4 plus the square root of 3 times negative 4 plus 16 equals 2. Okay, going back to the left, the square root of negative 4 plus 4 is the square root of 0, which is just going to be 0. However, over here, we're going to have negative 12 plus 16 equals 2, which means we'll have the square root of 4 equals 2, and 2 equals 2, which is true. So this true over here means that x equals negative 4 is the solution to our original equation. Yay! Whew! This is a real grown-up radical equation.